Hey guys, what's up? It's Raven. I can't believe it, but my daughter Zaya is turning eight years old in just a couple of weeks. Eight. It's crazy. Time has really flown by, but what that means is I have officially thrown her seven different birthday parties. Obviously starting with her first birthday eight years ago, and now we are planning her eighth birthday party, which is going to be an enchanted fairy garden theme. So we're right in the middle of planning that, and I will have a bunch of content about this fairy theme, so stay tuned. But in the meantime, I wanted to kind of rewind, go back, and take a look at all seven of her birthday themes that we've done so far. I just thought it would be cute to reminisce and look back and see how Zaya has grown over the years, but also see how my party planning and DIY decor skills have also grown over the years. And maybe some of these birthday party themes, decorations, and details can give you guys some inspiration. So let's start by looking back on Zaya's first birthday party. Okay, so immediately as I'm watching this footage, I'm just like, wow, hashtag growth. Look how far I've come when it comes to throwing parties. Now this wasn't a bad party, but this was one of my first ever parties, probably my first actually party that I ever threw in my life, period. So this was like no experience. I was just getting into anything related to party planning or doing DIY decor. I mean, you guys have seen some of the recent parties I've done, like my Christmas parties and all those things. This was before I knew anything about anything and I feel like it kind of shows. Okay, so backstory on this theme. It's like an Arabian Nights, like genie inspired theme, but really it was inspired by the cartoon Shimmer and Shine with the two little genies because Zaya used to love that show. So I wanted to do some Thing that was like shimmer and shine, but not so literal where it was just like the shimmer and shine cartoon everywhere. I wanted to do like a, a cooler approach to it. So it was just like inspired by the genie vibes. But one thing I was really proud about from this party was the little genie costume that I made for Zaya. I literally hand sewed her little outfit, the little genie pants and the top with the thing around the shoulders and I made her a little headband. But my outfit I just bought off of Amazon. Okay, so this this cake was actually really nice. This was my first time ever getting a cake like this for anything. I had never had such a fancy birthday cake for any of my birthdays before. That just like wasn't a thing that we did in my family. But I knew coming into this party, I'm like, I want a really cool cake. I found this a bakery, I don't remember how I found them. It's not the bakery that I use for everything now, but they did a really good job. It's very detailed. But I remember being blown away when they quoted me the price because I just had no experience with this. I didn't know how much it was gonna cost. And the fact that it was several hundred dollars, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but I paid for it and I do think it was worth it. I know a lot of work going to these cakes. So I feel like the main thing that I noticed about that party is that it's kind of lacking when it comes to the decor. I didn't really do very many DIYs at all. I mean, I did make Zaya's costume and I made the little cardboard cutout for like the backdrop, but that was pretty much it. Also, there was no activities at the party. It was just like hang out, eat cake, eat food. I did have kind of like a little photo booth set up where people could like put on props and take pictures, but there was no like activities for the kids to do. And yeah, it was kind of just like a really simple party. I've added a lot more detail to my recent party since then for sure. And then kind of continuing down that simple party route, Zaya's second birthday was a unicorn theme, but we really didn't even have like a full party. We kind of just celebrated at home with just immediate family. And then we brought a cake and a pinata to her preschool so she could kind of celebrate at school, but that was really it. We didn't really do a real party. But the thing that I was proud about with this theme was the fact that I decorated her cake myself this time. 
So little pro tip when it comes to kind of trying to DIY these type of birthday cakes, we actually got the cake itself just from the grocery store. I think you can just get like, ask for a plain cake, like whatever size, however many tiers you want, and then just ask them to do plain icing on it. We just got plain white icing cause that was what we needed, but I think you could probably ask for whatever color and then you can just decorate it yourself, but you don't have to do all the hard part of actually baking the cake. Um, I think the icing swirls came out really good the gold metallic effect turned out to be pretty cool even though it wasn't what I originally had in mind and surprisingly I was able to put the eyes on there pretty good so I think it came out really cute I love the color scheme and I mean I had fun making it it was kind of stressful and we used the fancy unicorn cake for our at-home celebration and then we just got a regular grocery store sheet cake to bring to the school. I just feel like since she was only turning two years old, there's only so much that a two year old can do at a birthday party. They really just wanna hit the pinata and eat the cake and celebrate with their preschool friends. I feel like you don't really always have to do a big full birthday party when they're that little, you know? But then I kind of changed my mind because for her third birthday, I was like, okay, I wanna do like a full blown birthday party. I think she's like just barely old enough now to really like enjoy and experience like a full blown birthday party. So I was like, I wanna step it up. I tried to do something kind of special for her first birthday. Mm, didn't really do too much for her second birthday, but for the third birthday, we're gonna like really do the full thing. So I came up with this carnival kind of circus fair theme. And I would say this party is where I discovered that being a little bit extra, paying more attention to the details, incorporating more details, doing more DIY decor, all that stuff that you see me doing now, this is kind of where it started. This is like my first attempt at really going all in. So I did a lot more when it came to DIY decor with making like a welcome sign, making this whole circus tent photo backdrop with the fabric, doing projects with the Cricut maker to make customized buckets for the party favors. And just overall being more detailed and just making sure that like every little thing matched the theme. So like with the food, I had cotton candy, popcorn, corn dogs, candy apples, circus animal cookies, because I wanted everything to go with the carnival theme. The petting zoo was a really big hit. It's really good for kids that age. And it really helped to like bring the theme to life of like, welcome to Zaya's carnival. We have all these different attractions. We have face painter, we have petting zoo. I even purchased some little simple like carnival games off of Amazon to also place around. And then I also decorated a cake for this party as well. I guess I felt like I could do it because the unicorn cake from the previous year turned out good. So this one was like a carousel cake. I wouldn't say that that this cake was my absolute best work. And then I kind of cheated because I purchased the carousel topper. I didn't make that part myself, but I just did like all the icing myself. It turned out pretty good for like beginner level. But these days I've learned that when it comes to getting a really cool cake, it's better to just leave it to the professionals. <laughs> Zaya's fourth birthday party was smack dab in the middle of the pandemic. So we were on lockdown and could not have a normal birthday party at all. But of course I still wanted to celebrate and do something cute. So I kind of put together this little at home butterfly themed tea party vibe. Happy birthday, happy birthday to So it was all about stuff that we could do at home to still make Zaya feel celebrated and still feel special. At that time, she was just getting into all the girly beauty stuff. So I was like, okay, let me give you a makeover. I have my whole glam room with all of my makeup and stuff. So I did her makeup, I did her nails. She had her cute little fancy dress and all of her like dress up accessories. Pretty. And I also did like a DIY at home birthday photo shoot for her, just setting up like a paper backdrop and I took the photos myself, but they actually turned out pretty cute. And because we were on lockdown, of course, we couldn't have any party guests outside of our immediate like pandemic pod, which was just myself, Zaya and my parents. So we had everybody join in via Zoom. So it was a virtual birthday party. And we still decorated a little bit. You know, we had the butter 
butterflies hanging down, which was a cricket project. I did some little flower balloons, tablecloth, you know, just a little something. It was kind of giving like old fashioned 90s birthday vibes, like how I remember my birthday parties being as a child. And I also set up all her stuffed animals sitting at the table to kind of be placeholders. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Oh. <laughs> And I guess I was just on a little bit of a cake making streak because I also decorated this cake. This cake I actually baked myself though. The other cakes I bought pre-made and I just decorated them. This one I actually baked and it turned out pretty well. I mean, it's a very random design, but I just knew that Zaya would like something that was colorful and had butterflies on it. So we made it colorful with butterflies on it. For her fifth birthday party, it was kind of that in-between phase where we were coming out of lockdown, but we weren't so sure about having big parties still. So I wanted to do something kind of small and intimate at the house, invite a few people, but nothing too crazy. And the other reason I wanted to do something a little bit smaller is because her real birthday surprise was that we were gonna be going to Disney World. So I did a Disney princess themed party to go with the Disney World trip surprise. This was a very deep DIY party. I did all of the balloon garlands myself. I did the table setting myself. My little sister helped me with setting out the snacks. But as I said, I learned over time that if you want a really cool cake, leave it to the professionals. So I hired someone to make this really tall five tiered Disney princess cake where each layer represented a different princess. And I made sure to do all the princesses of color. Everything is set up. The cake arrived literally minutes ago. I was waiting on her as well but she got here just in time and the colors match perfectly, oh my God. But it was gonna be a small party with a small guest list, so I didn't want all this cake. So actually only the top layer was real cake and the rest of it was just fake. So that's a little hack. If you want a cake that looks really impressive, but you don't wanna spend the money for having the whole thing be real and you don't wanna waste all that cake, you can actually just ask them to make fake tears. Ready? You see your cake? And then you see what's outside? So it was just a few friends, cake, some snacks, but we did have a princess themed bounce house in the backyard, which was a huge hit. Kids are easy to please. All they want is some cake and a bounce house. They were more than happy with just that. And then of course, when I told her we were gonna go to Disney World, I mean, yeah. I got you these shirts because we're going to And then the following year, we had just gotten our pool and patio done, just barely in time. You gotta go watch the vlog to see all the drama with that. But since our pool area was done, her sixth birthday was gonna be a mermaid themed pool party. So it was like her swimming sixth mermaid pool party. Since we were definitely out of lockdown at this point, this was gonna be a bigger party, full blown. Like I wanted to really do it big to kind of make up for the previous years. So this party had a lot of details from the DIY decor to all of the themed food and treats that we did. What I really liked about this mermaid theme is that there is so much you can do. Like there's so many ideas you can do for the sweets, treats, and food. There's so much you can incorporate with the decor because it's like everything ocean related, everything beach related, everything mermaid related, anything that has to do with pools or swimming. Like there's just so many different ways you can take it and so many ways you can kind of like be inspired by the theme for the details of your party. I personally had a lot of fun with it, just like coming up with all the little small details. I even dressed up like a mermaid and I DIY'd my top. And for the cake, I knew I wanted something really nice and intricate again, so I knew I wasn't gonna try and DIY it. So this is when I discovered Sugar Shaker Bakery, which I have been a loyal customer ever since because they do really amazing detailed work. I think the thing that I was actually most proud of with this party was all the snacks and food and candy and how I made sure that every single item was on theme. In hindsight, I wish I would have done more with the table 
display. I had made the DIY coral sculptures that are in the back and I tried to do my balloon garland mermaid tail, but I was struggling with it and it kept falling down. But I wish I just would have done more with like the backdrop of the table. Like it needed more coral and some sort of like something behind it. Like I just felt like I could have done better with that table display. I definitely did a better job with this party of making sure that the kids had activities to do. So we had decorate your own treasure chest. And then of course we had the pool there with all of the pool toys. So that was really the main attraction. <laughs> And then learning from the carnival party where we had the face painter and the petting zoo, I was kind of thinking like, okay, who can I hire to come and add some razzle dazzle to this party? And of course, mermaid party, you gotta have a real mermaid. So I hired a real mermaid to come and swim around and that was like the perfect final touch. And then that brings us to her last birthday party last year when she turned seven, we did the Malibu Barbie party. And I guess it makes sense because this is the most recent party, but this is my favorite party. I think this is the best party. I really kind of slayed this one, not to toot my own horn, but like this one was the best by far. I feel like this shows my growth. This shows everything that I learned from the previous parties. And I feel like I put it into action on this party. So I'm really proud of this one. I wish I could go back and relive it. I think I like this party more than Zaya liked this party, but don't get me wrong, she loved it too. Cause Zaya is a big Barbie girl. Okay, so this was for her. I get that comment a lot. Like, is this party for you or is it for Zaya? It's for Zaya. I always pick the themes based on what she's into, what she's loving at the moment. I always ask her questions about what she wants and how she wants it at her party. And it's just my job to bring it to life and make it a little bit extra. For the first time in Raven Ali's history, we are on time. We are not rushing around. There are no guests. Yeah, and that was the other thing about this party. We were actually on time. Time. We weren't rushing around. I wasn't like running out of time and not being able to get stuff at the lat. Like previous years, I was like always running out of time and not being able to really finish everything. And then guests are arriving and everything is chaotic. But this party was for how much was going on. It was surprisingly like organized and on time. But yeah, this party definitely healed my inner child as well because I've always been a Barbie girl. So I was super excited about this theme and I was able to pull from my own Barbie ex expertise because I know a lot about Barbie. So I think that's why it was a little bit easier for me to go above and beyond with this party, but also because of the vendors. And I could have ever imagined it's so like perfect and professional looking. It's got the Mattel logo. We've got for ages seven and up because I'm turning seven. It's got a beautiful balloon sculpture, not even garland, but this is like the craziest balloon thing I've ever seen with beach balls and floaties at the top to give that Malibu flair. So I hired Austin Balloon Co. to do the amazing Barbie box and balloons and all the balloons outside as well with the bounce house. So it was kind of a combination of actually hiring professionals to do some of the major work but I did also do a lot of DIYs myself. But with this party, I went ham with the activations. Nowadays, I love a good activation. That's like my favorite thing about hosting is to think about all the different little stations that I can have that go with the theme. So we had the Barbie beauty bar where you can do tattoos, makeup, and nails. I also hired a face painter who was doing like glitter tattoos and face paint. Then there was the Barbie gift shop where you could pick out your Barbie and some accessories and stuff and put in your gift bag. Then um, outside we had a bounce house. We had the pool. It was supposed to be a pool party, but the weather didn't end up being good. So there was actually no swimming going on, but they were supposed to be swimming as one of the activities as well. And we also had a popsicle cart outside. So it was just like a lot of different little stations and activities and things to keep everyone busy throughout the party. So I had really just amped up 
up that aspect of it compared to the previous parties, which I think overall made the whole party just look and feel a lot more like fun and impressive. And then the food display for this party, my mom was really like the main mastermind behind this. We worked together to decide the menu, make it go with the theme, but also like the aesthetics of how it was going to be set up. And I think we nailed it. Like I was really proud of our food display. Since it was Malibu Barbie, everything was sort of like a little bit beachy boardwalk inspired. So I tried to think like what foods would they have on a boardwalk or beach side? So we did a build your own hot dog station. I always like to include something like that where it's like customizable, something for everybody. You know, not everybody likes the same kind of foods. And I don't want my party food to be boring, just like plain hot dogs and hamburgers and pizza at every party. I always like to think of something that can like match the theme, but also be like versatile so that everybody can enjoy it. Then we've got this table over here. So we've got our DIY placemats with the confetti inside that shake around the little DIY table runner, which is acting as the water because we've got the Barbies in their boats, two boats, two different Barbie boats with two different Barbies in there. And we got some floaties, a pineapple and a flamingo. Yeah, the one thing that I wasn't super happy with was the way I set up the dining table. I feel like I could have just done a better job with that. We did these DIY confetti placemats, which were cool. It's a really cool concept, but I just felt like they could have been executed differently or better, or I don't know. I just feel like that one part of it wasn't my favorite. And then the cool thing about the Barbie theme is that we're Barbie girls. We have a lot of Barbie stuff. We have a lot of Barbies and Barbie houses. So we literally used stuff that Zaya already owned, Barbie dolls and her Barbie dream house and stuff like that to incorporate as part of the decor. I was really sad that the weather wasn't good for swimming on that day because this was supposed to be like the first real pool party because when we did her mermaid party, my backyard was just barely done, but not really done. I didn't really even have like all my furniture or everything done yet, but this time I did. And so I was excited to actually like really use my pool in my backyard for the first time, but the weather ended up being cold and gloomy and like not swimming weather, but it still looked cool for the theme, I guess. Simply Sweet Bar did an amazing job with the popsicle cart. She even like hand picked out the umbrella to match our theme and did a custom logo on the front of the cart. We're actually going to be working with her again for Zaya's eighth birthday, but we're doing a different sweet treat to go with the theme, not popsicles this time. So I'm excited to work with her again. We're going to be working with Sugar Shaker Bakery again because they've done amazing on like her mermaid cake and her Barbie cake. So they're going to be doing her cake again for this fairy garden party. I've got another really detailed idea for the cake that I want to do. But yeah, speaking of Zaya's eighth birthday party, we have a lot planned for this enchanted fairy garden theme. We're going to be doing a lot of DIYs as usual. I'm taking it all in from everything that I've done in the previous years. What worked? What didn't work? How can I improve and just take it to the next level this year? I feel like I have a good amount of experience now, but y'all will just have to stay tuned to see how it turns out.